Hi there, baby dolls. Something mysterious has been happening with Tron. And yes, it's going to relate to Pulse Chain and discussions it related to you if you are holding any coins from the last cycle. So if you have any coin, you know, Chainlink, Pulse Chain Community, whatever it is, Matic, BNB, you want to have a look at this, okay? So I'm going to show you the, the Tron chart right now. Tron has been walking up, and it's been walking up mysteriously. And I really got to show you a true appreciation for this price chart because you have not seen anything like this before. Uh, the Tron chart, <clears throat> it, it, this is why it's, it's, it's wild, right? This is actually what it looks like, okay? This is like in real time. All right, now this is a two-week chart. You can see how, <laughs> now this is a long time, friends. Like, oh, we mean a really long time. Now, what is Tron? Well, I'm just going to show you, of course. So Tron, friends, was, okay, It was. it's considered like just a grift, okay? <laughs> it's considered a grift. You see now, I'm just going to explain you the controversy. So Justin Sun, okay, he is an early Bitcoin OG, whatever it is, okay, wherever he got it, not really sure. Um, but... Justin, pretty much, he owns more Ethereum than Vitalik, right? And you might be wondering, how did he own more Ethereum than Vitalik? Well, Ethereum became a unicorn in 2014, 15, when it was released, okay? And then it went on a giant pump. And in the cycle, basically, Justin saw the product market fit of Ethereum. And he says, oh, my gosh, this Ethereum thing is wild. It's taken over the world, right? That's a, that was Ethereum, doing doing its giant run. I mean, I can show you the chart, which is right here. So they're all witnessing these things. Friends. Ethereum launches from nothing, and it does this giant pump, and it goes up and up and up and up. Now, you got to imagine, right? Ethereum, from its ICO of like 31 cents, man, it is now up. Look what it's up now in like June of 2017, man. It is up, friends, 1,000x. Okay, it's literally up 1,000x. And people are flipping out, <laughs> of course. Now, friends, I was not around, but obviously I'm just, I can, I got a feel for this stuff. Everyone's like, mind slipping out. Like, what the hell is this thing? It's up a thousand X. No one's seen anything like it. Have you seen the size of Vitalik's head? His brain can barely fit in his skull, right? So then here comes Justin. Now, Justin's very smart. He's actually very, very smart, Bitcoin OG. And of course, he sees the product market fit. And he goes, hey, uh, clearly the market wants this like EVM, which is a uh, smart contract platform. And all they did was, now it was a kind of famous case, he literally just copy-pasted Ethereum. And it was more of a copy-paste than anything else because it was literally, he even forgot to edit some of the Ethereum words in the code or something, in the white paper. <laughs> he forgot to completely edit stuff. It was referencing, like, Ethereum stuff. So that's how everyone was like, oh my gosh, bro, you just literally copy-pasted the Ethereum thing, okay? However, he didn't make it EVM. He made it something different, just a change. Now, it's kind of funny. Back then, you wanted to be your own thing. But now, because Ethereum was a unicorn winner, you not being EVM, it like sucks, doesn't it? Because now our MetaMask can't connect to it. You have to get a whole new wallet. You got to use like a Tron wallet. Okay, so why this is all coming up, friends, just this interesting, right, is recently, Justin Sun, he's now bought an extra... 362,000 Ethereum total, okay? That's huge, Why? Right? This is twice the size of the Pulse Chain Sacrifice wallet. His average price was 3,050 bucks of the recent purchases since February this year. And for comparison, Richard Hart's Pulse Chain Sacrifice entry is about 3,800. So he's got a bit of a better price, okay? Now, he's basically like, here's the controversy part, right? You've been wondering like, um, how did he even get that money? Well, of, of course, a lot of it is shrouded in mystery, but I'm going to show you just on a daily chart. So pretty much, friends, at the very, very beginning, okay, Tron launches, and it literally does. This distance here, you see this big wild move, is literally 100x. Okay? It literally does a 100x, bang. And it, it launches, it's crazy, right? It launches, I don't know what it's ICO price, maybe it's ICO price was down here or something, it just goes sideways, 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 and then literally out of nowhere, look at this, December 17, all right, literally, you know, Bitcoin top, it just goes nowhere and then smash and it literally goes to the freaking moon, okay? And that's what you see today. So you actually check this out. Actually, there you go, 146X. That's man, that's that's huge, bro. <laughs> he actually did nothing. That's like this 2017 cycle, it was literally caught crossing the chasm for technology adoption oh, again, crypto, okay? So we're never going to see that again. It's wild, okay? So, so <clears throat> what happens during this time is, now I can't remember where I read it, but I remember making track of it during this period okay when it's pumping justin sells 
via OTC $300 million of his coin. Okay, so he pretty much, I, th I think it was either 300 million or 600 million. He dumps on his community. So he obviously gave himself the coins for free and he dumped on the community and he probably, he sent it to like Binance or the other exchanges or OTC. I don't know how we ended up doing it. He basically got rid of it and yeah, there you go. So he basically walks away with 300 million bucks and that's why he's, he's always had like this wild, like very controversial reputation because technically I guess he didn't do anything wrong, but also you dumped on everyone, okay? So that, that's pretty much it. Now, what ended up happening after that, friends, is you see, this is where the crazy part is. So it's starting to walk up now, okay? This is the wild part. It's starting to walk up now. But, all right, let's put on a weekly chart. Tron, friends, was super popular back in this 2017, 2018 period. And then it literally just dies from the top. It goes all the way down. This is zombie virus, okay? Now you're down 97%, okay? Even if you measure from this period, you're down like 94%, okay? So you're down 94% and this is DeFi season, okay? So DeFi season happens and Tron can only go like a 3.8x, okay? So that's this is DeFi season. You remember, man, Aave and other coins, they're doing like 10. They're doing 20x, you know what I mean? So if you're only doing a three. And then in the bull market, okay, this is the unfortunate part as, as well, Tron can only get back to, remember its top was like a tick tier, like 30 cents. It could only trade back to like 20 cents. It couldn't even get back to the high, all right? So this is just another fascinating part. Even if you draw a FIB extension from the top, where does it actually land? It lands around the 50% retrace, okay? That's the most Tron could get back, around the 50% retrace. So whatever its market cap it hit was, that's pretty much what it got back to. And I actually have the market cap chart here. So Tron peaks at 15 billion momentarily here. And then it comes back to like 10 to 11 billion, all right? So why there's inflation in the Tron coin, all right? So you just get to see, right? So it hits the 61% retrace on the market cap, but it doesn't hit that much on the price. The price is around 50%. All right. That's something something interesting. I'm going to relate that to Hex later on. So it would imply, even if Hex does a big run from here, it, it would imply that maybe the top in Hex, like let's say Hex copied that price chart, it would be Hex going back to like 27 cents, pretty much 25 to 27 cents. Okay, but the market cap would be higher. Remember, Hex peaked at 45 billion. Um, if it only matched halfway, it goes to 22 and a half. But because there's more in token inflation out, the market cap maybe goes back to 30 billion. All right, but your price is only 27 cents, not the 35 cents or whatever it is, okay, to match it, okay? So now I'm gonna continue, friends. You see, this is what happens. So Tron pretty much, friends, is a failure. It's a fa All it can do from this point, like it has a run, it does like a 13X, and you gotta imagine that that's a failure. Why? I can show you. Look what Tron versus Ethereum did, okay? So Tron Ethereum, right? Well, I'm gonna show you now. Look at, this is like wild, right? During 2020, it's crazy. Tron actually didn't even pump against Ethereum. Look at this. It, all it did was it kept sinking and all it could do, look, it make it makes a new freaking low. It drops 60% and, and then it breaks even. How disgusting is that? So you're holding. So where's DeFi season here? It drops 70 to 80%. It comes back here. That's your bull market. So your literal bull market in Tron is this. And then it comes back down. Okay, so this is where, so normally the story stops here, normally. But Something, something's happening, okay? Something is happening. There's a there's a bottoming thing happening out here. Okay, it's been a long time, friends. You gotta imagine, this is 2021. So you have one, two, three, four years of being dead against Ethereum. Four years, brother. And by the way, you've been sinking down, okay? So what ends up happening now, friends, is Tron skipped the 2021 bull market. But now... There is some signs of hope, okay? Signs of hope. And this is where the mystery is going to continue, okay? Because now this is the price chart, right? This is the USD price chart. The USD price chart is walking up. It is walking up. And obviously it's a relic coin. It's basically something from the past. Now, as I mentioned to you, I've got to play some nice gentle angel music for everyone to remind themselves. Tron missed out everything of 2021. It missed out DeFi. It missed out everything. Had nothing to do with it, okay? And by the way, just to let you know, Tron did try to get DeFi on. I remember back in 2020, they have the they have DeFi like like Justin's stablecoin, Justin's yield farming. They basically did Justin stuff 
or Justin Sun related stuff there. But it could not basically get back to like the former glory of the mania that was 2017. Okay. Now though, it's starting to climb. Weirdly. Why? Why are you starting to climb? Now, if, if you know Tron fans, if you look at any fundamental data, you are no stranger to Tron. Why? Tron has a lot of adoption, okay, which always surprises people. And I can actually show you right now. If you go to DeFi Llama, look what number two is. Number two, Tron has the most adoption. It has 2.2 million addresses. A lot of people believe it's fake. It could be real, right? And the total value locked is 7.4 billion. What the hell? Check this out, right? This is where people get confused. Like Binance is 4 billion. Soilana's 4 billion. See? Arbitrum is 2 billion. How on earth are you at seven? What the hell? Well, Tron, friends, Tron has stable coin adoption. Okay, so Justin's theory, his approach to crypto, it's different to Richard Hart. Richard Hart believed that you have to tap into demand because he was obviously looking at Bitcoin and store of value. And you got to make like a cult-like mentality. You got to get people to believe in your thing if they want to hold it, okay? And that's it's true, right? Now, this is funny. This is the breakdown of the Tron stable chain, all right? So you have Just Land, Just Stables, right? USDT, Sun, okay? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of Justins. Justin's own Tron coins are like thrown in there to like yield farm some inflation stuff, okay? So, but it does have a lot of stable coin use case. And most people are surprised to hear that. So Tron was the super fast way to send Tether in Asia, and it still is. It's a very, very cost-effective way. And people use Tron across exchanges as well. So you have a Binance exchange, you're like, oh, I've got to send money to this guy, or they just use the Tron network themselves, and they're just sending stable coins. Now, you've got to remember, back in those days, we did not have the industry that we have today. So people genuinely thought to get adoption – you got to get everybody using the chain. And if you use the chain more, no matter what it's used for, they will like the value of the chain will go up and people will buy the coin more. That's what people thought would happen. Now, unfortunately, it didn't play out like that, did it? Because now we know just because you have stable coins, it did, does not pump your back. Okay. Uh, and we've seen that today, right? Look what happened in meme coins now, okay? People would rather hold meme coins. We relate to them more rather than this VC tech trash, okay? But back then, no one had any ID. So it's a different school of thought. And in 2020, the DeFi and 2021, you got to see it play out pretty much. Like, obviously, the product market fit of, of Tron could not catch up to, say, gaming, metaverse, DeFi, Ponzi, DeFi, all this other stuff that was appearing in the rest of the crypto market, Okay. But now, friends, I want to show you another chart as well. So this is the Tron BTC chart, okay? You see Tron BTC, friends? This is 2018, and it's literally been going nowhere for a freaking long time. I mean, check this out. Since 2020, that's literally been, been going nowhere, okay? But it's right here now. If it goes back to the top, all right, oh, which is a round up here, all right? There's actually a big wick up here, but that's about 5.8x, okay? 5.8 times on Tron to get back up there, okay? Now, I am watching this very closely. Okay, I don't have Tron, but I'm actually hoping for their success for the rest of us. Because if Tron can get there, it'll be a sign that no matter how dead your coin is, if your community hangs around, there is a pot of gold waiting for you at the end of the rainbow, okay? So, I call them old relic coins. So if you're wondering, oh, are there other old relic coins? Yeah, don't bet the farm on them. You know them already. Okay, XRP and Litecoin, they're two of the other relic coins that are still around. Of course, some people throw in EOS and Stellar in them as well, but I don't know about their communities, right? See, EOS friends, they have 140,000 BTC still. They've got like enormous BTC, but I don't know. There hasn't been a run on the treasury. I don't know what their whole plan is to do because that's a lot, man. EOS can basically do anything they want in the world. They have a lot of Bitcoin, man. How are they going to bootstrap and front run stuff? I don't know. It's going to be the longest con ever. I don't know. Okay, so that's 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 big. It's big. They're one of the biggest holders of Bitcoin. EOS. They've been holding them the whole time. So it, here's the thing, though. When you see Tron's chart and you're like, okay, like you finally go up after all that amount of time, it doesn't sound nice to tell someone like, oh yeah, just wait five years, right? Just wait five years and it eventually goes up. Okay, so I'll show you the full chart right now here. Yeah, it doesn't sound that nice to say it like that, but I mean like. Look how cool it looks here. Just, it looks, <laughs> it looks like you're doing something. 
you're doing something, aren't you? It's just it's funny to see. It's a different chart, right? You're like, it, it's surprising. It's one of the old coins. But what's actually happened, friends, is, all right, this is like you want to know, what, what's actually going on? Well, what's actually going on is the community is still there. The Tron community is still there. And for all this period of time, people who were weak hands dumped Tron, okay? They kept dumping Tron. And people in the Tron community stuck by their guns. They still believe in Justin. They still believe in Tron. And even though a lot of people quit and went to all the other stuff in crypto, these people stayed there. And slowly but surely, that's the nature of markets, friends. There's only a certain number of coins out there. All right. Once the weak hands are gone, they transfer to strong hands and they bleed themselves out. And that's pretty much what's been happening. So now we're seeing this walk up of friendship. It's kind of crazy. By the way, you put it to a log chart. It looks great, right? Look at this this big like giant Nike. It's like it's, it's like just going up. It's quite crazy to see, right? So it's interesting that no matter how things how tough they got, okay, they were able to still stick by their guns, right? Now, obviously, I, I explained here like the controversy is it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's like well. That's what people thought. They thought, well, okay, if we want if we want the chain to get the most amount of usage, Justin's philosophy was, okay, let's just, we have to get all the Tron here. We have to get all the stable coins on here. If we allow people to send each other money back and forth, we're building like a big financial network. And that was the theory. Now, you never know, man. Imagine imagine it ends up being the right thing. Like no one in crypto is ready for that, are they? They're like, oh my gosh, it ends up working because they got a big network effect. But here's the thing now. Apparently, Tron is now getting spammed because it's using Ethereum technology. All right, it's, it's just a copy paste of Ethereum. It's getting spammed now. Sometimes it costs a few dollars to send Tron. I've seen some people do that, talk about that. So now it's getting spammed as well. So that's where like uh, maybe as soon as Ethereum does its upgrade, Tron is just going to copy paste the Ethereum code and have their own like mm, subnet and layer, other like layer chains and stuff. So maybe that's what happens, right? On the layer two chains, okay? So um, technically... It has a lot of adoption, right? But now you can see from the price chart, you're like, wait, mate, you did nothing for the last bull market, even though people were using you a lot, all right? So basically, it's interesting, right? These dying networkers, friends, friends, they think they're dying, but people are still around. They're still around, and they're slowly growing. They're just Their growth rate is just not as extremely high enough to make it onto the mainstream crypto influencer channels, okay? Now, this is where, like, I'll show you the XRP BTC chart, right? So this is XRP BTC. It's down 97% from the top since 2017 because XRP went absolutely freaking flying to the moon, 500x in a year. It's down 97%, okay? So XRP is another relic, okay? And I'll just show you. So, you know, Tron's walking up. But what about XRP, okay? So it's just a bit of a different game, right? XRP, you know, it could walk up as well, couldn't it? It, it could walk up. It could just start doing this, couldn't it? Right? It could start doing that and basically surprise us later on. And, yeah, that's pretty much what, it, like, that's what we're waiting for. Now, there's some things to think about as well. So I've also just like for, you know, just to, to complete this set, I'll just show you Litecoin as well. If you look at Litecoin, um, the thing with Litecoin, friends, is it's the same, similar thing, right? You never know, Litecoin could walk up as well, but Charlie Lee dumped a lot, most of his coins here, okay? So the founder went away. So Tron's founder hasn't gone away. That, no, that we think, right? Uh, I don't know if Charlie's really gone, but... It's a tough game, right? They're, they're relic coins, okay? So remember, friends, I told you, the older your network effect gets, the older your cycle coin gets, the odds of you picking the winner becomes harder and harder, right? Because, like, uh, see, out of Tron, there's like there's probably like 25 relic coins. Only, like, Tron is the one that's kind of, like, going up. You see how hard it is? Whereas, so if you're in a cycle one or cycle two coin, the odds of you being okay, like, the higher, right? Obviously, cycle one coins are highest odds because it's a new new product market fit and stuff. Okay, cycle two, your odds dropping dramatically. Cycle three, pretty much game over. Like, it's finding a needle in a haystack, okay? So, Charlie Lee dumped all his coins at the top and abandoned. Ripple have dumped over a billion dollars of XRP, which is true. They have a billion dollars on the balance sheet, friends, and they've been spending a lot of money. So, and they have to fork Uniswap. So, you know, Ripple and the Ivory Town and stuff, they still own 55% of the tokens, Okay, but Ripple also huge. XRP is huge, 24 billion still with that discount, man. It's 24 billion market with the giant discount. That's crazy. Now, Justin Sun, friends, he dumped $300 million of Tron. He went on these different like random journeys around crypto. We call him His Excellency. He became like the Granada, I think, like a representative. It's kind of funny, right? Now, I haven't tracked Justin too much. So uh, in terms of like what he's doing, is he still promoting it? What's he's trying to make connections? Not sure, okay? Um, 
Now, here's the thing. Let's tie it into our something relevant today. Now, what about Pulse Chain? Because I know a lot of the Pulse Chain community, firstly, you want to play some Hobie Ugly music for them, all of us. Right, we're still holding. We're still holding, okay? But now you can see, right, this is worst case, man. Worst case, you can swing it back. Worst case. Now, here's the thing. You go, wait a minute, but Litecoin and XRP haven't swung it around. I know, I know, I know, I know. But, all right, firstly, cycle's not done yet. What if they do swing it around and they start to go up? Now, tongue-in-cheek, right, it's USD pricing. All right, so will XRP, BTC ever get back to its all-time high? I don't know. Or maybe if it does, it takes like nine or ten years. You know, it's it topped out 2017. Maybe it gets back there 2027. Maybe it walks up there 2027. That's a 10-year, man, waiting back to get back to the all-time high of a Bitcoin price. Wow. Let's just show you. If it, that's, if it gets there, man, I hope it gets there, okay? But let's look at some real numbers, friends. Now, what I can do is just show you where Pulse Chain is right now. And what I've done is you got to add up Pulse, Pulse X, E, Hex, and PX. Just consider it one coin, okay? I'm trying to be conservative here. I want to show you where Pulse Chain would be if everything got back to the same market cap of Hex back in 2021. Okay, so here is the Pulse Chain price, all right? It's at 1.5 billion, so we would have to do a 30X. And a 30X from today, friends, gets us at around, if you check this closely, it gets us at roughly 12X day one sec, around here, you see that? It's around 12x day one sec. Okay, so it's about 30x from today. So the prices we have, the market gap, so that's pretty much what would that mean? It would mean if you go to gopulse.com, you went to gopulse.com, which is right here, and you add up all these market caps, removing the origin address, they should add up to around 45 billion. That would be equaling what we got for HEX back in 2021. I'm now going to show you the HEX price chart here back then which is it right here. So it's right up here, okay? Now I'm gonna remove my examples here. So the hex price chart, let's look at the log chart. That's pretty much where it was up here. Up here, to, uh, topped out at roughly like 45 billion. So how, how do we get that number? It is like, it was I think 90 billion hex coins times 55 cents, around there. Okay, that's a pretty much top, okay? That's the top market cap. So just write the top equal, I'll just write 45 billion roughly, okay? Market cap, just so you know, okay? so. We are quite a while from that. We're like 30x away, man. Like we're down a big, big, big bound. And we don't know, friends, if we're going to get there. I'll be honest. I don't know if we're going to get there. I hope we blow through it. I really hope we blow through it. I don't know, man. Um, but we got some advantages, okay, that increase the odds, that change the odds a bit. So this is the thing, right? Charlie Lee, he dumped Litecoin. Ripple dump XRP. And Justin dumps Tron. Now, I don't know if he dumps Tron anymore because he got, what he did was he dumped $300 million worth of Tron and then he bought Ethereum at the bottom of the last bear market back in 2018, 2019. Okay, so that's pretty much what he ends up doing. So I actually show it to you on the chart here just so you can see what he did. Right here, let's actually go to that, that bear market. Okay, so it's kind of crazy, right? It's, 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 the, the visionary to see this. Okay, so he dumps his Tron and then he starts, like he buys Ethereum down here, right? Like under 400 bucks. Again, and obviously he gets to smash it up. Now, I don't know the exact price that he gets, but you just get to see, like, he's basically, it's one of the greatest stories ever told that not many, everyone knows about. And I'm, there's no way to get all these stories and you have to piece all the puzzle together. I'm here. Maybe you can look at this, back at this in history class one. They go, yeah, man, one of the biggest turbo, they call him like, he's a gr grifter and like swing trader in one. Like, it's, it's insane to actually see this type of thing go on. Now, Remember, Justin, Charlie Lee, and Ripple, they all dump value extract, okay? Richard Hart, as far as we know, he didn't dump his coins. He dumped Ethereum, okay? So Richard actually, he used leverage, okay? He used a different type of leverage. He raised money in a hex ICO. He took the 150,000 Ethereum, and he sold Ethereum at the top. So he, he literally used leverage, all right, even though like he tells everyone not to, but yeah, you, we are not him. You understand? Yeah, so that's the difference. Now, it's the same thing playing out, isn't it? We have Pulse Chain, Pulse X. They raised money, $600 million. Now it's in an Ethereum, right, stash. It's 170,000 each. So it's leverage again. 
But I'm using that word leverage loosely, okay? It's not really borrowed. There's no expectations, but just saying it is what it is. It's using basically someone else's money to do that. Now, here's the thing, okay? Um, this increases the odds that, you know, our pulse rate ecosystem, that, that our investment works out better than what Tron, Litecoin, and XRP had to endure last cycle, where they were completely irrelevant, Okay. So, I mean, even as you get to see, see, friends, what, why I love showing this for you, I'm, I'm glad I have this fluffy microphone, is most people, friends, they look at XRP, right? They look at the XRP chart and they say, oh, XRP couldn't rally because of the corrupt SEC. So they go, well, no, XRP, this is the corrupt SEC move, and it could never go up because of the corrupt SEC. But no, 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 here's the thing, man. Litecoin had the exact same chart, right? If you look at Litecoin, Litecoin had the same chart. Friends, you see that? Okay. Lycon had the same chart, and then you have uh, Tron as well. Tron had the same chart. You see that? So all it can do is come back 50% and then drop back down. XLM, so you can even look at Stella, right? Stella has the same chart too. Another relic. See, 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 friends, you notice it? There's relic coins. What about XMR? What about Monero? We can find this as well. Look what Monero did. Same chart. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. So, you know, XRP, all right, instead of instead of like landing to three bucks, you stop at dollar eighty, but you, you come back to the same point anyway. So double thumbs up, right? Look at our analysis. I'm telling you that's why I'm telling you everyone in the pulse chain community. People think I'm posturing, like I'm peacocking out here, like, oh, I don't care about the yes, corrupt SEC. No, guys, I'm literally just I've shown you evidence. The corrupt SEC is way more irrelevant than you think. All right. It's way more irrelevant than you think. The product market fit of the community and everything else out here and what people like believe they think they need in crypto, right? I have to use these terms loosely because we don't produce any cash flow. The product market fit, that's more relevant, okay? That's what it comes down to. So I've just shown you all these examples, man. Like like XRP, only thing they got hit by the SEC. But the XRP community still believe they got robbed. They still, man, we got robbed, we got robbed, we got robbed, man. We would have hit it, we would have hit it. But actually, I'm showing you, bro, uh, no, you wouldn't have hit it, man. You wouldn't have hit it, okay? Even if you look at the, the Monero BTC ratio, okay, you can have a look at it from the start. This is all you're able to do, but friends, this is literally the bull market for Monero. Look, you make a new low, this is your this is your high. See, Monero couldn't do anything, friends. Look at that. See? Lower high. That was your bull market. You did nothing. Okay. So seeing all that, you're probably wondering, all right, well, a lot, there's a lot of things that you have to process. How does the Pulse ETH ratio look like? This is Pulse ETH, friends, very, very important, okay? Oh, yes, it's down, whatever it is, like 90-something percent. So we are hoping that it plays out the same. Hoping. Well, like I said, I don't make no promises, man. I don't really know. Just taking, this, you take your bet. It is what it is, okay? So this is Pulse ETH's average sacrifice price from July. Yeah, it's down and it's crushed. But I guess we're praying that when Ethereum rallies up, Richard Hart takes profit somewhere, Okay, and he rotates the Ethereum in and this thing swoops the hell up. And we've already calculated, you know by the Uniswap formula, I've given the, given the formula to you, man. Like we all know the formula. Um, the liquidity on the offer, it will be pulled and it will be smashed up at the same time. So like if you have 1.2 billion sitting there, by the way, 1.2 billion is only a $7,000 Ethereum. 7,000 ETH. So if you think ETH is going to like 14K, well, we're going to have now like two and a half billion. Okay. That, that's going to be insane if that happens. And you're probably wondering like, what does that actually mean? Well, the total offer for Pulse Chain is only like a hundred, like it's only like, I think $60 million on the offer side. Okay. 60 million. So like, yes, friends, we, he could literally make it click up 100X in a second. But everybody just sells, okay? There's net sell pressure. But I'm just telling you, like, there's enough. There is enough money, okay? However, you need the Ethereum ETF, tick. You need the Ethereum price to go up, tick. You need Ethereum to cross above $7,000, tick. And then you need him to be able, actually all willing to sell, right, at that point and rotate in, okay? So a lot of people believe at some point that's going to screw up. They think he's going to take the money and run. I don't think so. Just to let you know, we have on-chain proof. He already rotated money in. At the beginning of this year, just to let you know. Not guessing, no nothing. We actually have the transactions we saw. We've made all these videos about it. The Pulse Train Sacrifice Wallet has been rotating money in. It's already demonstrated, even without a corrupt SEC like ruling, 
it's rotated money. And yes, you can calculate the prices for where Pulse, PulseX, and everything else goes. You just do a 30X from today, okay? So like you have, I don't know, friends, I want I want these things to go much, 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 much more. All I've done is just tell you where, where a all-time high return of the market cap would, would go back to. So 30X for PulseX from today would be like 5.8X day one sec, okay? So I'm not saying they're going to go there, okay? I'm not saying that, not claiming that. It could be less, man. It could be less, okay? So remember, Hex peaks at 45 billion, 4.5, okay? Like, obviously, I want Pulse Train ecosystem to go to hundreds of billions, but, man, it is possible it only goes to 20. It is possible. And that would suck. That's only like a 13x from today. But remember, if that does a 13x, friends, the altcoins and the meme coins on Pulse Chain will do a multiply on that. The strong ones. Obviously, the scam ones just rug you, okay? Just to let you know. So, you know, so, yeah, there's a big range. And no one knows where it's going to be. That's why it's literally just a full-on range, okay? So you have, you have four. I'll show you, right? I'll actually show you. And also, just quickly, you know, where would the combined hex price be with 30x? That would be like 30 times 5 is like, you know, 15 to 25 cents somewhere there, depending on the ratio as well. But I actually show you right here. So this would be it. So what I'm going to do is just draw a box here and just write, okay, this is 45 billion market cap would be around the 12x, okay? And then if you want like 100 billion, it would be up here. So this would be, just to show you, man, look, look how crazy uh, close these things are. That's 100 billion. This is 45 billion. And you might say, oh, I think we're only going to get like 22 billion or 25 billion, which is only like a 50% retrace. That would be around up here. So that, look, look how much, this, this it changes a lot, right? So look at that. This is 12X, friends. This is like 15X or something. Okay, 15X. This is the 30X. This is like a 60X. All right, so you can write these out here. This is, right, so this is like a 15X. Okay, this is 30. And then we have like, you know, like a roughly like a 60 up here. So you can see, man, yeah, there's a wide range, man. There's a wide range, man. There's a wide range. Of course, you would love it to keep going up and up and up, but there you go. Uh, 15, 30, 60 from today. Um, remember, my top measurement, though, is 100 billion. That is just a round number. It doesn't have to stop at 100 billion because we don't know how rest of the rest of the crypto industry is going to go. Uh, remember, like, Soylana, friends, hit 100 billion recently. So if one day Pulse can just get to where Soylana is today, then you have your 100 billion, okay? And I'll just let you know, 100 billion was a resistance level for many chains back in 2021. So obviously, I hope we blow that, man. I would love us to blow that. I would love us to hit the 200 billion. But like I said, you don't know. None of us know, really. Uh, but you just got to take your bets anyway. You really have to believe. So I'm glad you were able to come on that journey with me, right? You see these old relic coins, some weird stuff happening with all these coins that are so dead. But like, that's the price you pay, right? If if you want to just be in one coin, you better be willing to wait for a very long time. And they eventually like walk themselves up eventually because man that, that's a long time that's, that's honestly that's punishing because think about the tron the tron case right now i have trx eth ratio here okay tron versus ethereum you can see in the top left here okay tron ethereum and i'm just going to show you how like this is what you missed on man this was a big DeFi season okay you missed out DeFi, which is like it's where we are today pretty much okay then all the way here friends you missed out on alt layer ones see interesting right Learn from this. All right. Tron did not rally with an alt layer one. Okay. It did not rally like Cardanzo. Look at Cardanzo. Look what Cardan Cardano did in 2021. You see that? See this Cardanzo part? Tron didn't. And I've actually overlaid them on the chart now. So Tron is the orange. Sorry, sorry. Um, Cardanzo is the orange. And see how Tron stays dead? Right. So why? Well, they were cycle two coins back then. Cycle two. And I guess the market just chose Cardanzo. You know, it is just uh, Charles Hoskinson. So you, remember, friends, you got to think about this. That there's a certain cohort of people out there. And the older your narratives are, you're running out of people to grow. You're running out of growth rate. So there's less, basically, room for winners. That's what I can say. Okay, the pie can't grow as big. So what ends up happening is there's more of a discrepancy between a winner and a loser back then. Now, Charles won. Okay, back in 2021, Charles got the product market fit. He was featured on Crypto Banter, Altcoin Daily. Remember, BitBoy was making Charles 
uh, interviews and stuff back then as well. That was all happening in 2021. Charles was also doing the streaming. Remember, uh, Justin Sun wasn't doing streaming. He wasn't doing any uh, YouTube videos and stuff. Justin was doing something different. So as you get to see, right, and by the way, there are other Relic coins as well. Cardanzo was the chosen one of the last cycle, but it was the only one. It was the only one, okay? And by the way, Cardanzo, no one was even using the chain back then. He didn't even have smart contracts. So that's why I'm just show, showing you how tough it is to pick the unicorn from dying narratives from cycle two, cycle three narratives. It's like really, really tough. Like look how hard it was to pick Soylana from this one. Soylana and inje Injective, okay? And Floki, three coins out of 500 of the older stuff, okay? So just to recap as well, right? I'll remove Ada, Heathens. Look what ends up happening though. You missed alt layer one chains. And then as well, at the end, look at this. It didn't even bother rallying. It just had nothing in here at the very end which was basically metaverse, gaming, DeFi 2.0, everything else just erupts. Tron, you got nothing. You literally have nothing, okay? And this is where we are today. You're still at the same price. You're just like slowly, 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 hopefully and ends up walking up, okay? So now you have a full scope of what's actually possible. Um, and I think, obviously, friends, I think, I know Pulse Chain, it doesn't have those disadvantages Tron had. Tron, remember, is not even EVM. Tron, you need another wallet. Tron, uh, Justin doesn't have, he didn't have a cult. There's not, a, the Tron army is, is, is there, but it's not as, I guess, adaptive to marketing and communication stuff like Pulse Chain. It isn't. So all I'm trying to do is trying to see the odds of this thing coming back and how high it can come back when it comes, when it comes to like checking out uh, valuations and stuff in the future. So, so far, so good. Looks great. And I've got to remind you again, friends, once again. Justin, Charlie Lee, and Ripple, value extractors. They all dump their tokens, okay? Richard did not dump his tokens, okay? He dumped borrowed Ethereum, which is not borrowed. It's my general term. It, he, Richard Hart did leverage, okay? He, he raised money. He raised ETH. He held the ETH. He dumped the top. And then he rotated the Ethereum in to pump up HEX. And you can see this evidenced right here. So the orange line is Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up, tops out. Richard Hart is dumping it, okay? Richard Hart is dumping it, and he dumps his Ethereum as well, and then that's what ends up happening. <clears throat> you get to see as it, <clears throat> as it tops up here, Richard is starting to smash up Hex. Bang, 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 bang. Obviously, that's a big distance, okay? Look at that. That's a big, big, big distance. We'll actually show you the chart here. Look, this distance it goes from friends one cent to 50 cents. Okay, so it does a 50x. Literally a big giant 50x. Okay. So luckily we're able to figure this out, man. Like, because if we weren't, man, we'd all be screwed. We'll all be screwed. Now, once again, I don't know if it's going to repeat. I'm just telling you, I like those odds. I like those odds. Okay. He sold the top. And remember, he's got 170,000 Ethereum here. We can all clearly see it. And he does not dump his coins. Okay, there's never been no evidence. Everyone's checked everything, every corner of the chain. He doesn't dump his coins. He dumps the ETH. All right, that's what he does. He dumps the ETH. He probably pays himself somewhere along that way, and then he pays the community. So that's pretty much it. Now, you don't know if he's going to rotate all of it in, but I'm just telling you, that's part of the thesis. So people ask me like, oh, candles are going down. Yeah, bro, I know. Well, nothing's changed so far. Nothing's changed so far. Give me a higher Ethereum price, and then basically we can start cooking with gas. Okay, so you've gone through a lot today. Make sure you like, subscribe, catch you soon.